Aleluya. You know, the presence of God remains the secret of anything. I don't care what it is. The presence of God. If you lack, listen, listen carefully. If you lack the presence of God, it's possible to have the power of God and his presence can fade out of your life. Are you listening to me? It's always possible. You can chase power. You can pray for power. And you can get it without the presence of God. But the presence of God is a direct product. It's a state of the health of your fellowship with the Holy Ghost. This is the litmus test of whether or not you are in fellowship with the Holy Ghost. It's not necessarily power. A man can stay and not pray for one year. He may be absent in God's presence for one year and still lay hands on someone and they will fall. But there is a presence. That one, you can't fake it. it it's, it's an aura. It, it, it gives people a picture of your current state with heaven. You can raise wheelchairs even if you never go to the secret place for years. These are gifts. But that atmosphere, that glory, when you stand and speak to people, the word of God comes into, they cannot even explain what, what is happening to them. That one is the presence of God. That's not power. That's not power. You can fake power, you cannot fake his presence. See, when you see a man who lives in the presence of God, when he stands before you, you may not understand intellectually what is happening, but you, you, you know that this is there, is, there is an intercourse, a current, present reality. Many lives do not have the presence of God. They have power. They have motions. They have people falling down. Have you been in a meeting that you don't even know God is there, but you just see crutches standing up? That's power. But the presence of God, the glory of God. No mortal being can stand in the glory of God and be the same. No matter how stubborn and hardened you are, something will, an impression will be left upon your spirit. Hallelujah. See, when the presence of God dries from a life, you will know. You just sense that everything around, you can still have motions of power, but there is a freshness. That freshness is absent in many lives. So you can hear a preacher, nice message, but the impact is not about shouting or not shouting. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. That's a characteristic of the presence of God. Father, we pray that we will never lose your presence. Take away from us anything, whatever it is, that is capable of causing us to lose your presence. So I bow as I enter the throne room and I cast myself down at your feet, Lord, for you are holy, thou art holy. There is not like you, for in your presence, that is where I must be. For in your presence, that is where I must be. For in your presence, that is where 
time must be that is the place of my strength in your presence that is where I must be Lord in your presence that's the place of wisdom in your presence that is the place of power in your presence that is the place of revelation in your presence that is the place of authority in your presence that is the place of glory In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God. In your presence, that's where I belong. I am seeking your face, touching your grace. In the clefts of the rock, in your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. I truly can do nothing without you. You have become my Lord, my friend. There is no ministry without your presence. You are the secret. Always. You are the secret of freshness. You are the secret. A.W. Toza, a man known to be the 21st century prophet, wrote a book, The Pursuit of God's Presence. This generation does not know how to practice the presence of God. We know how to pray. We know how to fast. We know how to stretch in tongues for hours and days. But we do not know how to cultivate the art of his presence. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in my life. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Only potent Father of mercy, and grace thou art welcome in this place Holy Spirit you're truly welcome in my life I'm worshiping him Holy Spirit thou art welcome in this 
this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome You are the fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. You are that fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my ever present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. Nakane 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 Girma No Kaka Ayabo Nakane Nakane Na kane, na kane, na kane, na kane. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. I won't trade anything for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence, my King. I love your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray a prayer in one minute and say, Lord, Cast me not away from your presence. Pray and say, Lord, may I not? Many of us have lost the experience of his presence. You're just operating power. I'm telling you. Your presence. This is part of the meeting. You can really get distracted and forget his presence. Your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. How can I? How can I lose your presence? What for? Make sure you are praying. This is part of the meeting. Hallelujah. The presence of God, the glory of God, can make a man, it can affect even your physical body. The glory of God, your physical body, it can keep you young, fresh. This is not about money. It's not about prosperity. It's the glory of God. The glory of God can alter you. It can bring you into an atmosphere. This is not just power you invoke and prime. No, no. It's an atmosphere. 
you live there you dwell there you speak from there you judge things from there Moses said show me your glory God said no man will see my glory and live he said however I will let my goodness pass by you and he covered Moses' eyes and the Bible says he stepped and Moses saw eternity past I'm very disturbed at how easily people can give up God's presence to take something that can be found when his presence is treasured what are you looking for fame money power charisma ministry anointing intelligence you see I'm telling you the church of the Lord Jesus Christ we've lost the art of God's presence that you are praying prayer is not the same as the presence of God many people think that you are praying in tongues have you not seen people who pray week after week every day but there are certain people when they step in it's an atmosphere it's an atmosphere in the glory i will stand help me with the symbol please i will stand and I will lift my hand in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me in your glory I will stand I will stand and I will lift my hand in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me I love your presence I truly love your presence more than gold more than silver oh I love your presence I love your presence I have learned the value of your presence better than power better than anointing i'm telling you better than fame nothing can be compared to the presence of the lord jesus see without the presence of god you don't have a message you don't have a ministry you don't have an assignment learn this everything you will ever be and do will only have value because there is a presence that backs you stop chasing after what his presence can give you i have learned by experience moses said lord do not send us from here yes let the people say we are marking time but don't send us if your presence will not go with us he understood the value many of us have not been trained the, the presence of God is not goosebumps the presence of God is not some ecstatic feeling and the Lord walking with them not answering their prayers walking with them and the Lord making his habitation. Father, teach us your presence and help us to value your presence. In the name of Jesus, please be seated.
Hallelujah. His presence. How many of you truly love the Lord with your life? Let me see your hands. You truly love the Lord. Some of you love the Lord, but you don't truly love Him. You love Him, but not... Years ago, the Lord asked me and said, can you die for me? I said, no. I can face persecution for you. I can go through several things. But to die for you, no way. No way. I'm not sure I've gotten to that point. And it did something to my heart. I don't know what it did. I cannot explain but I know I love him. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I truly live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Have your way in me Lord I give you my heart give you my soul I live for you every breath that I take would you have your way tonight Have your way, have your way, have your way in me, take your place, take your place in my life. Have your way, Lord. I want to be under so much influence of the Holy Ghost. I want him to possess every fiber of my being. Just like a demon spirit possesses a man and begins to demonstrate his character through that man. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost to an extent that his face began to glow as though it were that of an angel. There is such a realm, there is such a realm where a man can become like a God upon the earth. Not by usurping authority over people, climbing a mountain in the spirit. The Bible talks of men who this earth was not worthy to receive. They contended for certain things that were higher in the spirit. Always examine yourself to find out whether you are losing his presence. Don't use miracles as a sign that the presence of God is still with you. The psalmist said, cast me not away. That means a man can be casted from his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's good to have everyone around. We bless God for last week. Hallelujah. Celebrate God's servant, Pastor Williams. That was a powerful word. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It was a great time last week. I missed the house. I know some of you didn't miss me. You were very happy. I have good news for you. I'm back. Praise God. I'm back alive, strong. God kept me for your sake. You shout it more than ever until you change. Hallelujah. 
If you don't love God, you will not love me. James 1, verse 22. James 1. Please make sure you are writing. These are some of the few things you do that makes you know whether you are growing or you are not growing. If you've been coming here for a long time, if you're coming for the first time, it's okay. Or if you're not yet born again. But if you've been coming for a long time and you don't have a, a good notebook or notepad or jotter or something, or at least your phone, your notepad on your phone, that you can write out teachings, it tells me how much you value God. It's amazing how people give God so little of their life and time, yet they demand so much from him. Hallelujah. We give God a fraction, just a fraction of our attention, our lives. And then we sit back and wonder, Lord, why is my life not like so, so, so person's own? And God is saying, this person has given me all. Hallelujah. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. So make sure you write, pay attention to the things that are taught. It will build you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1, 22. Did you hug one another? While seated, just turn to your neighbor and hug the person left or right. We didn't do that. We believe in love. Do it. Don't look at me. Some of you are frowning as if it's a curse. Hug one another. At least this is what we do now in, in lieu of holy kiss. Hallelujah. One day, I remember some years ago, I was in a relationship seminar, and they asked me, they said, is there holy kiss in the church of God? Ah. I told them, I want to be your friend. Don't ask me those questions. No. Hallelujah. At least I know that you can kiss a very small lady and a very old woman. If you truly love the person, you can kiss a very small lady like my sweetheart. Yeah? She always receives a kiss from me. And then very old. If you really love that old woman with agape, you should have no problem kissing the old woman and say, Mommy, nah. How did we get here? James 1. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and immediately forgeteth what manner of man he was. Can you imagine? But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in it. Take note. He looks into the perfect law of liberty and he continues in it. He said, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. What's the reward? This kind of man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. Now, there are lots of believers who, as they begin to walk with God, they start saying, Lord, why am I not receiving results in my life? Why is brother so-so-so or sister so-so-so receiving results? And I've been born again for a long time. I come to church, I pray, and I fast. Hallelujah. But then, I'm not seeing the manifestation of God's word in my life. I'm not seeing evidences that show that I am truly walking with the word and that the word is working in my life. Hallelujah. And several times people send me text messages and say, I love God. 
I have done everything I know how to do. I mean, this thing is either the word is not working. I can't explain it. I've done everything I know how to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. You know, I read scripture. I even bought books. And I'm even doubting now whether this thing works or not. Hallelujah. Tonight, I trust that God will help us examine that truth and then we'll pray. The Bible says, James 1 verse 22. Anyone with Amplified? James 1 22. I'm seeing a woman outside. You're holding a child. You came with a baby. I think you wore traditionals. Please, can I have that woman outside? You came with a baby. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You came with a baby. Please, when you find that person, let her come. See a woman with a baby. Let's continue. James 1, 22. Amplified. Who is there? Can you help her with a mic, please? I like the rendition. I'm still seeing the woman. A woman with a baby. Child. Small child. Not really a newborn baby like few months. I think it may be maybe some years, a year or so. Yes. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Listen. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Okay? And not merely listeners to it. And not merely listeners to it. Okay? Betraying yourselves. Betraying yourselves. Into deception. Into deception. By reasoning contrary to the truth. By reasoning contrary to the truth. It says, obeying the message. See, a lot of people wonder why they don't see results in their lives. And they love God. They come to church. They are sincere people. Hallelujah. But over a long period of time, nothing, nothing at all seems to work in their life. They have scriptures in their mind. They can quote scriptures. And then they wonder why these things are not working. And the Bible begins to give us an insight into what may be the possible cause. It says what? Be ye doers. Say after me, doers. Practitioners of the word. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That means in a crowd like this, there are people who can be hearers. Oh, glory. I'm hearing this word. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls them hearers. But then it is possible that as the word of God is coming, you are hearing, but there is no willingness in you to practice the principles and live by the word. It says, do not be hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, the, Bob, the Bible calls it self-deceit. Hallelujah. You are listening to the word just like everyone. You can quote the scripture just like everyone. You know the songs. You know all the religious cliches. But the Bible says that they are not practitioners of the word. They don't live by it. They are not committed to walking in the truth at all cost of the word. And the Bible calls that, if you are a victim of that, the Bible says you have been deceiving yourself. So it is possible for a man to deceive himself. And there are many Christians, many pastors, many members, many Great men and women of God who are living in deceit, deceiving themselves. They love God, but they are not practitioners of God's word. Can I tell you something? The performance of the word is for doers. Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says. Without an action, without a doing, there is no faith. 
I'm telling you, many believers, born again, tongue-talking believers, are not practitioners of kingdom principles. They know it. And, and you see, look up, please, look up. The most dangerous thing that can happen to any man is for you to know certain truths and not practice it. Because anytime you hear someone teaching it, there is that hardness you already know. Hallelujah. You already know. But it's not working in your life. It's not producing results. That means something is wrong. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it leaves you with a promise. He says, so that thy profiting will appear unto all. So could it be that we have many believers who hear the word? MP3s all the time in their ears. And not many are committed to the practice of God's word. You truly do not believe the word if you don't practice. Any part of scripture you have not been practicing is the part you don't believe. No matter how you try to convince yourself. According to God's principles, you have believed a thing truly if you are living by it. So you see that we have many Christians but few believers. Not many people truly believe the word. Hallelujah. Look up. For those that are students, when ABU brought out your timetable, did you believe that timetable? How did you prove that you believed it? When your lecture was 8 o'clock, were you sleeping? You got up and went to class believing. You didn't see the person who pasted the timetable. Correct? But you were so convinced. If you just lay down there and say, ah, my timetable is out. When they brought out your exam timetable, how did you prove you believed it? People jam-packed the library. That's faith in the administration so many people now say i love the lord lord i love you the urgency in your spirit during exams tells you how much you trust that those people will not change that timetable and that you had better be serious are you listening to me but when it comes to practicing god's word there is no urgency there is complacency and people just hope that maybe it will work it tells on the way we respond and live by the word of God. So we have people tithing today, not tithing tomorrow. We have people loving today, not loving tomorrow. We have people studying the word and not studying. And then you ask people why. And they tell you, look, if you really know what is happening in my life now, you even thank God that I'm still born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you expect people to sympathize with you. And you say, look, see, just forget to, it's just God that is helping me right now. <laughs> Can I tell you something, friends? Listen, if you bend from living by God's principles, it will not be an excuse for God to just see your tears and bring blessings into your life. You will suffer ruthlessly for it. If everyone else is practicing what is not of God, and you say, Tor, will I stand alone? You will suffer. Are you listening to me? If you claim God's word is not working and you leave it, then what else are you practicing? Hallelujah. Many believers truly do not live by the word of God. The Bible says, be ye doers. This looks very simple. Very, very simple. But this is the reason why so many people will never walk in certain realms of the reality of the kingdom life. Because we truly do not live by the word. Deceiving yourselves. Hallelujah. Many believers, many hearers, we have all kinds of tapes, different bookstores. Oh God, Jordan is here. His bookstore is full of tapes and books. There are many of us who buy books and buy tapes every week. When they go to your room, they see series of different men of God. Different series. Hallelujah. 
Say, have you read this book? You say, yes, Abba, chapter 1 talks about this, chapter 1. And then you see the person is chorusing the solution for his predicament, yet not changed by it. Hallelujah. Have you seen such kind of people? They can tell you when they are counseling somebody, you, you hear them speak. Ask them, you can attach someone who just got born again to them and they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit, but they themselves will never rise beyond that level. But they understand the spiritual principles. You can send them on evangelism, they will bring back souls. They can do great motions, but to live and get personal success in their lives as a result of the word of God, they will never do it. That's why Paul said, let it not be that after I have preached, I myself will be a castaway. That means it is possible. There are many men of God who are victims of the things they teach. They stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Doers of the word. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving they themselves don't give the reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives so they don't know the difference they don't live by the word of god many people say okay speak the word and pray but the leaders themselves don't pray hallelujah you go to a man of god's house you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match he gives you the timetable see have you not known that the bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves. Yeah, that's where the robber will hit the road. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even him, he's not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left. I'll never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my bunk. And the devils came out. Oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us. When evening came. Bible said, and when evening came. That was when Jesus was healing. But when evening came for us, that was when it became a serious concern. People started singing praise and worship, strolling out of their rooms, moving to the, and they took light. I didn't sleep there. You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles and when you see them you say my god look at the, the unwavering audacity but then they don't believe it someone teaches on tithing and says i assure you if you don't tithe you will do this this person ask him in all sincerity you see we are not in the old testament otherwise many men of god would have been humbled by now many of us i'm not just saying them you know now God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tithing or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. 
Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Bah, 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 bah. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to koinonia. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It will only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe uh, protocol or worship or any department, you are the one who will lead prayers. And then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens are open. Only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave. But can I tell you something? You can deceive man, but in the realm of the spirit, there is no deceit. A lot of people say you cannot deceive God. You cannot even deceive demons. You see, because in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. I hope you know that. You can deceive men in this realm. But I tell you the truth, in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. Ask the sons of Sceva. Paul was doing certain things and one day, the Bible says, they gathered, come sir. They carried somebody, sons of Sceva, plenty of them. And they came and they quietly locked the door. They said, we adjure you. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, is that not the real Jesus? And the demon says, today is today. You will know that we have been watching you. He said, Jesus, I know. In other words, I see them in the secret. We know that they are living by the principles of God's word. And so we can attest. See, if you don't, if you don't run away from God in the secret, he will not disappoint you in the open. He said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. He said, but who are you? He said, since you want to pretend, it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake. And the Bible says, that spirit beat all of them, one, stripped off their clothes, two, and drove them out for the whole city to see. So imagine the men of God in that city naked. What happened? Not accident, not bomb blast, no nothing. He say a victim of our... Uh, <laughs> you just imagine miracle service. And then just imagine all of us running. Me and Bishop stand. I say, let's stand in unity. What happened? Oh, but that's what happened. That's what the Bible says happened. Do you, do you think those guys will be the same? They will first run away from that environment. I'm going to say, what minute these things? I thought it was so easy. When you see a man who is living by the word doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a rude shock in your life. Be ye doers. Be ye doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, it's from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this ground. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible, reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time the Lord told me for the next one week, 
I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting. And the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10% of the things that were there, my life would have changed. And I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny in these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day as if you will live. They say make commitments and before they said anything you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that. You see that's why honestly, honestly I'm not carried away when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church. Too much emotion. And we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel, ah, the people are really getting it. The power of God is flowing. Not necessarily so. If I sing a very nice song now, whether the name of Jesus is there or not, some of you will start crying. You are just emotional. He will just remind you of maybe one, your children's choir song, something, and you just start crying. It doesn't mean you are being changed. It's just simple memory of the past. Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? There are many of you that gave koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicaments. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages. Collecting everything. Do you have this Abba, Jerry Savelle? I have this. You see sections. And there's nothing that is being changed in their lives. Nothing. Not their character. Not any result. The reason, hear me, very simple but profound, is that many of us are listeners, but we are not practitioners. Hallelujah. I remember somewhere in Joss, they were doing orientation for Jerusalem pilgrims. Those who were going to go to Jerusalem. And you know, they have some time of just encouragement and for some Bible studies. After teaching them about the significance of visiting the Holy Land and the impact it should create, they were giving them warnings and they said no drinking. And one old man was just looking at them while they were talking. He didn't say anything. He was just looking at them. And later when it was time for people to comment, just say anything, AOB, the guy said, well, this is my own issue. I won't go and buy beer in the Holy Land, but if I see it, I won't let it spoil. You see that? Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has destined? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy a cigarette, oh, for instance. But if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I used and went. See, um, it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So, someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. The Bible says, be ye, it says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just hearers, deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? There are, may, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. 
That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to walk in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless musics, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone. Thanks to Blackberry. You can ping your destiny left and right from one person to the other. Receive things you should not receive. And then Facebook again. These things are nice if you use them well. Twitter. We have all kinds of media um, outlets that help people not to live by the principles of the word. So you have a man of God who loves God. He's preaching the gospel. But still has in one secret place in his folder. Passworded. All kinds of pornographic jargons. And the problem is, they will never admit they need help. You see the point? It's a different thing if you are struggling with a challenge and you admit and say, Lord, somebody help me. But where people just laugh, and then they come out and do all kinds of things. And then you sit down and they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jared. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. Practitioners of the word. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We'll be playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God, bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230 something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. John Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold, though. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we are not. We mean a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? He said, a lady now, after the burden of standing to minister. Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Keturah. So to have somebody who will come and comfort you. And he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop, this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine. And in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called 100 Bibles, 100 Bibles in each of them, there were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians, people who stand and lift up their hands and wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re examine ourselves. Are you interested in practicing God's word at all costs? Johnson Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we'll probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. 
But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Whenever the woman says, I will shout or just get more money from building project or whatever and just try and say, you said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standard show. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came. Just knocked and said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just stripped herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves and try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says, he who conceals his sin shall not be delivered. He shall not prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. And the lady just closed the door. <laughs> Who know? Who know? He would have slept with her quietly. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria. The great man. Whereas you have no identity. In the realm of the spirit. Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. Hallelujah. It's a call. How much of the word of God do you believe and are living? He said one of his sons in the ministry, he went to preach for him in Lagos. Within one year, when he started, when he saw the crowd as a spiritual man, he said he called him after the meeting and the son gave him a brand new, Bible students don't worry, you watch the video. It's a minister's conference, won't give people around, but you watch it. Hallelujah. Gave him a brand new car to a jeep. Most men of God, are you not surprised that with the evil happening, most of the people who should talk are not saying anything? They are just keeping quiet. Come on now. Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent. When you have dipped your hand with somebody, will you bite the finger that is feeding you? Hallelujah. It's sad, but I must tell you this. It's sad. I did a little study, and I'm glad he said it about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please, don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. Hallelujah. But, the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pok. And he was the one who ordained Idahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy was living in a lot of, as at the time, he was living in a lot of sexual perversion. This is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of God, they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain. See, that's why the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins. You just hear one great bishop just got up. Ah, he's gay. Now you try, you, and you are now thinking. I always pray to God and say, Lord, as I stand to minister to your people, let me not transfer a faulty spirit. Once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristics, the leaders are not to be spared. I, I tell you the truth. The leaders are not to be spared. Hallelujah. I told you about my encounter and worry. When a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. See, this watch, this watch she wore. And then it had a it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! She said, Sorry, I'm looking for the 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 uh, receptionist in this place. I didn't know what to say. I said, are you not seeing my room number? I'm a guest here. In the night, quietly, 
Kuno. Said I should come and help her go and walk a guy from her room. Come on now. When I jammed that door and I locked it, kapa kapros katalabada. I will leave Zari and come to worry, kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen, that is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the khakis, he said, hold on. Apostle John Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. This does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, the blessings of God and some of the, princip the principles that a daddy like you have taught us. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him, there is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic, just like my own here, that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, they said anywhere around Lagos, if your ears can hear that mic, whether your leg likes it or not, it will enter that church and sit down there. So ministry is expanding. And many sons just come, Papa, receiving demons and spirits. And now he got a seed of a jeep and he gave him. John Suleiman said, he said, even those who backslided did not go to the devil. They just fell short of God's grace. Is it that bad that you went? He said, from today, I delete your number from my phone. I have nothing to do with you again. Do you know how many men of God go for meetings and they go with ridiculous PAs that nobody can explain? Let me see one pretty lady. Annie, come. So I'm going, I'm going to where now, Mina? And I just drop. I tell them, please, book two rooms or one large room. Anyone can serve. Two or one large room. And then I say, she's my PA. Hallelujah. And when you see the seriousness in my life, you won't even believe. Think I'm seeing every lady like trees. This is an example, oh. Media. It's an example. Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self-control, what happens? So they have different people in different spots. Just sleep with her sharp, sharp, and then they just clap for the man. Comes to sit down and he stands up. And you see people falling under the anointing. He's genuinely anointed, but he has lost the presence. See, Samson woke up from sleeping with a prostitute. Did you read that in your Bible? What did he do? Immediately, the Bible didn't say he prayed to God. Immediately he got up, removed the gate of his city. Because they said they wanted to enter and kill him. So he said, let me remove the gate for you. He removed the gate and kept it on a mountain. That you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful. is not an endorsement. Are you listening to me? This is what a lot of people don't know. May God deliver us from a life of falsehood and bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God. There are many men of God who stand on stage and say, I don't owe God one night and God says, you owe me three years. Three years, you're a liar. You are shouting, I don't owe God anyone. It's not true. It's not true. They don't believe in giving. They don't give. They just have the way of getting money. They can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for. And you know, the way men of God run ministry, especially, I'm telling you, especially those who are not transparent, they run it in such a way that nobody can question them. These are prophetic instructions. These are this and that. 
So you, sister, please, after Koinonia, let me see you in my room. It's a prophetic instruction. What nonsense is that? Who is deceiving who? Then when she comes, say, you say, don't you smile, Abba. Is that not what some of your lecturers do? They look very serious. Come to my office. When you come, they say, ah, ah, relax. Who is beating you? Those are indications of perversion. Pack your load and run away. No matter what it will cost you. Doers of the word. Doers. Whether anybody is watching you or not, you are packaging your tithe and saying, Lord, you know I honor you and I believe this. Whether you are alone or you are true, you see a challenge in your life that is questionable. You don't sit there and just say, wow, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You seek for help quick, quick. I've had the opportunity to pray for a lot of ministers and I do that with all humility. When I see certain people come and say, look, I'm a man of God, but I'm struggling with this and that. I tell him, I say, look, we are all products of God's grace. But for your openness and sincerity, the Lord will bless you. But there are all kinds of people who will sit down and believe they are the Alpha and the Omega. Everything about God is in them. Are you listening to me, please? So what aspect of the word have you not made up your mind to live by and practice? I will not be surprised if there are still ladies in this place that get up to go and spend weekend in one guy's house. You are here, you are looking at me. Say, Tor, won't I go? He's the only one now. The Christian brothers are not coming. Which nonsense are you saying? Who do you want now to come and meet this kind of unfertile soil? Who do you want to come with this kind of life? The brother who is praying and sweating in your presence and praying for his destiny. Look at what you are living. I'll not be surprised if there are some of you who still tell your parents lies and inflate figures of school fees and the rest. Now you laugh because we have a church that massages things you should address. Just say, forget that lie. Don't make the people feel guilty. What nonsense is that? You don't find that in Koinonia. By the grace of God, we will attack whatever needs to be attacked in love until we present a bride that is worthy of God's power and glory and grace. Hallelujah. There are many of you that once situation becomes a bit uncomfortable, just a bit you can shake like a leaf and compromise at anything that comes. You are not a doer of the word. Tonight the Lord is asking you, are you ready to come back to a point where you truly begin to practice the word? Whether you are supervised or not, I always tell people the true proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. Hallelujah. If, come Tosin. If Tosin is my daughter and she's staying under my roof, you know the kind of person I am. You know there are some things I won't tolerate. I cannot say Tosin is a nice lady because I'm there. Are you listening to me? The day I leave her alone, and she has the opportunity to do anything she wants to do. But she says, I have come to take the word of my father as my own word. I'm not doing it because of him. At that point, they are the practitioners of God's word. God bless you. There are some of you, the only thing that is keeping you right now is because we are watching you. Hallelujah. One day someone came and said, pray for me. I want to go abroad. I said, why? He said, truly, I just know that God wants me to be there. I wanted to pray for the person and the Lord told me, don't waste your time. This is not my desire. This person is just going to go and die abroad. Some of you want to go abroad. <laughs> the first day you go abroad and stand and you see ladies almost nude moving. And you find out that nobody is even concerned. Ah, you just say, are you, are you serious? And I'm so happy my father's phone has spoiled. When you are not supervised, are you going to stand for truth? Do you know that there are some people that get back into things like drinking simply because maybe their group of friends are there 
He said, don't fall our hands, I beg. And the guy will sit down and say, ah! Just turn around and saw pretty lady. He said, oh, God, let me just do it. This is one last time. I'll ask for forgiveness later on. Are you ready to stand and live by the word? Can you be different? When people are bribing and doing other things, say, just give me my own. I won't be against you, but I won't talk. Because the way I'm seeing some of us, God is keeping you right now. It's just God that is tying your leg. You are like foxes. If they set fire and leave you, you can't do anything. That's why God has refused to expose some people into certain levels of blessings. You think he's a devil. It's because you are not ready. Hallelujah. There are many of us, the day you hold one million of your own, not that your father gave you that you should keep it for him, your, your own, that nobody knows, only you. Ha! You can book the best room in TJ Palace. You can charter a car from here and anywhere. You can take a flight, just drop in Lagos and go back. You can do anything you want to do. At that point, you'll find out three days, four days, you've not prayed. He said, God, no problem, we'll talk. Because there's no pressure again. It's time to begin to ask yourself, are you pretending over your passion for God or do you genuinely mean it? Are you just coming for koinonia because you feel, Kai, let me come. I don't want anybody asking me any question, did you come or not? Let me just kukuma come. I love the Lord on stage, anywhere. I love him with all my heart. And I'm committed to living by the truths of God's word that I know nothing else. I don't care what level of honor comes. And I want that to be your resolve tonight. Let me show you another scripture. Thank you, Jesus. John 13. John 13. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. John 13, verse 17. John 13, verse 17. Let's read it together if you're there. One to read. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So it's not enough to know. Jesus is encouraging them. He said, if you know these things, you will be happy when you do them. If you know the principles that can bring a blessed life, happy are you. There are some of you, you have your remaining exams now. You trusted God last year. It came out a way you don't like. He said, God, now I'm wiser. I won't get punished like a child again. Now I'm a man. I pray for a generation of men and women who are uncompromising. There are many of you, nobody can vouch for you. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, nobody can vouch for you. You can't beat your chest and say, Kai, I know the, the Bible says, God said, I know Abraham that he would teach his children, in the, he, would, he would raise his children in the way of the Lord. Let me ask you a question, all of you here. Who can speak for you if you are not there and say, I truly know that this person is a Christian? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you that nobody can speak for you. When they just ask and say, this guy, say, ah, in this life, you don't talk for people. Once you see people talking like that, they, they are already answering the question. Hallelujah. They say, sorry, want to appoint this person one post and what do you do? Ah, no, just leave that position vacant there, please. Don't give God headache. We have enough challenges in this church. See? Many of us are not dependable. You don't, your, 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 re, your resolve on God's word cannot be verified. 
you love God, but we are not yet sure if a guy starts meandering around you, whether you stand. It's amazing what people do in the presence of certain opportunities. Amazing. Hallelujah. I know a lady one time, some years ago, she wanted her school fees desperately. Then we used to meet at um, chapel. And the girl started attending ENI meetings actively. Apparently, she had that. It's time for payment of school fees. Every time this lady would greet me, immediately after the program, ah, I said, Lord, thank you. You are doing great things in life in this place. As soon as this girl got this school fees, I didn't see her again. Till I'm serious. About a, a year later, when it was about the same time, she just sent a text. She said, it's been a while. I miss you. I miss you. I said, me. Abba. Judas kissed Jesus, took him to hell. Nobody would kiss me and take me to hell. That's how many of us are with God. You just thank God. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this testimony. God is doing great things in my family. And at that point, especially our parents, you see that there is a sense of your father who has not done devotion in 12 years. We say, everybody wake up. Wake up, family. We are going to give God glory this morning. You just know that one area that has been pending has suddenly come. Later on, you wake him and he says, the day you enter this room again. And you are now asking, so who is deceiving who? That's how many of us are. When you came in the session, you were very excited. Hallelujah. Very excited. You are the one pointing fingers at people and saying, these guys are not praying. What's wrong? Pray for them. Now you are the one they are praying for. Why? Every time they see you strolling around Paladin, they say, one guy told me on Facebook he loves me. See, the things people do, that's why it's good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. That's why it's good to let God examine your heart. Don't set an exam for yourself and mark yourself. Give yourself a organized speech and price for yourself and say, I'm growing. Hold on. Let God be the one to work on you. But there must be a result. There are many of us today, the way we are pursuing God, if we don't get what we want from God, it's, it's possible you will just wave and say, God, I walked with you for five years. Everybody has seen now that I've, I've tried. Bless my father, you didn't bless him. Bless my mother, you didn't bless him. Bless everybody. Leave me alone. Just bless them. You didn't even bless them. Why will I stay? You say I will backslide. Look at who is going to suffer. The throne is made of gold. Everything is made of gold. You are the one suffering here. And people who live these kinds of lives get angry at those who are paying the price to live by the word of God. Because the moment you see that there is a sister who is standing and saying by the grace of God, I'm going to stand. I will wait for the will of God. I'm developing myself in virtue and character. Say, eh, just say all of us are bad now. Who, did they talk to you? Our presence is judging what you are doing. Please don't eh, pray. Let's just know that us, we are sinners. What is all that? Or you just see a guy reading plenty books. He's read seven books in a week. You have been sleeping and snoring. You just wake up. Your saliva is almost, it has poured on the bed. It's almost floating now down. I just clean your face. And you hear yourself talking foolishly and he's talking like a leader. And then he says, eh, must you say it? Abba, who is not growing too? You will always hate those who are doing what you are not doing. Always. You look at broke people. The day they bless your father, neighbors that used to laugh suddenly just get angry. They just gather themselves and say, ah, ah, hey, hey rain is falling, no. Mouths that cannot drink gari is now taking butter. You see, all kinds of insinuative statements. Whatever you are not doing, when you see someone doing it, it will judge you. You go around smokers and those who drink. 
Once they see you going to church, they just say, ah, ah, Mother Mary, talk, pray for us. So they look like they are bold. Something is judging them. You calm them down and talk to them and they will tell you. They say, I don't like my life. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Those who will receive rewards in this journey are those who are living. So ask yourself, are you frustrating yourself for nothing or you are truly practicing the word? Because it's going to be terrible if after 10 years of standing one leg in, one leg out, you find out that those who are truly committed are now walking in the blessings and you are still standing. Hallelujah. Have you seen those who they are inviting for a dinner, for instance, and someone who just heard from somewhere, you dress too, you come and stand like them. You say, you, what do you like? Yeah, I like, uh, I like cold uh, uh, juice. You are not invited. You are there talking. You can talk like them. Once it's time for the invitation, they say, brother, so, so, this way. And you start becoming uncomfortable. And you're just standing there and say, ah, so how are you? Are you sure your name was there? How did you know you were there? Because you had been standing for long, but you were not part of it. Now, you didn't do other things. And by standing there, you were implicating yourself. Because you've already just said with someone, even say, we'll sit together. When we get there, car, you're a very nice person. You talk smart. And then they say, last but not the least, sister, this. And you are just standing there. I say, what is all this? Huh? I've been standing here for long. It's not where you invited. Did you show signs of concern? That's how many people who named the name of... Do you know that's how many of our parents got into trouble? Ask them. They'll tell you we did evangelism. Uh-huh. We did evangelism. Say, I, I was even president of, of my fellowship. That's not the issue. Did you practice the word of God that you were taught? They say, so, so great man. He was my friend. I was even praying with him. That's the deceit. You were praying, but did you believe it? Did you walk in the truth? Others were tightening. You were there pretending and telling lies. Now, when the cloud is full of rain for those people, what happens? Those who are not tightening, it doesn't come. And you are not telling people, bring bucket, oh, rain will come. They brought buckets and drums of water. You are waiting. Say, just hold on. It, it comes gradually. It has been, you have been waiting for 20 years. It won't come because you didn't do anything. I refuse to, after committing myself to God, and then at the end, I will find out that I was only pretending and there is nothing to show forth for it. Two more scriptures and we'll pray quickly. Hebrews 4. Verse 1. I will show you from this scripture. Tonight's teaching is an admonition. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it too. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. He said, but the word that was preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Look up. So they had it. But what happened? It did not produce result. See, listen, let me tell you something. That's why you can have a crowd of people like this. And we are praying and releasing blessings. And you see some people lifting their hands, but they don't even believe. They are just wondering, will it really happen? How are we even sure this man of God is genuinely anointed? You are there arguing. Somebody is opening up his spirit. Next week, the person comes with a testimony. And I say, why is it that there are some specific people? I will find out this thing. Next Sunday, I'll come early and go and stand and see what media people are doing. That's the cynical spirit that people have as a result of not seeing results in their lives. The Bible says they had the word. The word of faith, the word of healing, the word of restoration, the word of prosperity, the word of godliness, the word of success, the word of increase. They had it. They jumped like everybody. They shook hands with everybody. They danced with everybody, but they did not practice it. Can I tell you something? One of the things I have found out in scripture is that beyond a man of God, beyond an anointing that you sit under, you are principally responsible for working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Work it out. When the word is released, you receive it. 
There are some of you that have been here with terminal diseases. It's been for a while. And you're just laughing and saying, well, well, this and that. For some of you, probably, part of the reason why you are not even receiving is you don't even believe. See, let me advise you. Don't come here if you don't believe I'm a man of God. You are wasting your time. Did you know that it's possible for people to do that? You just come and sit down and watch and say, ah, ah. And this happens especially for elderly people. When they come and see us stand here, they say, ah, these are young people. And, and, and you watch them sitting in their predicament. Look, let me tell you something. When it comes to the things of the spirit, drop your age, your title, your reputation, your educational status, whatever, and with meekness, you receive. That's the problem with a lot of people. Some of you have been calling some of your parents who have serious sicknesses to come. They say, ah, it's just youth. Hallelujah. I remember going Going to one house to go and pray for them. They've heard about me. They've listened to the messages. And when I went there, I saw the shock on the man's face. Apparently, he thought he was his age mate coming. When I came in, he couldn't believe it. Ah. So he sat down. And then for him to talk, he was just merry-go-rounding. He was wondering. Because some of his children are older than me. You know, he was talking, hey, how have I degraded myself? Now, and I sat down there. And with all humility, I was pitying the man. I said, who is suffering? I was sitting peacefully at home. You didn't let my phone rest. Now I have come. This guy was suffering something. He didn't want to say it. It was a medical condition. It was me and him. He could not speak. These are things I have had for years. It's amazing how some people come to look and they just look and they say this and that. A man is suffering from a particular... He just sits down and he just... Who are you deceiving? Every time William Branham wanted to minister to people, he would look at them and say, do you take me? Do you receive me as a prophet of God? People would say yes. Instantly, the vistas of their life will be opened up to him and he will begin to speak to them. One day, a particular man of God called me. He saw in a dream that I was ministering to him and he called he had been struggling with certain things, to real challenges in his life. And when he called, he said, well, God showed me this thing there, and I wanted us to rob mines together. I told him, keep your pride. I'm not going to pick a call and rob mine. You need, you need deliverance. And this is what God has sent for you to be done. If you are ready, come. Don't sit down there and say, we are not robbing mines. Many of you will never admit, see, it, this is not bragging. This is not bragging. This could probably be the reason why some of you are not receiving any blessings. You see the protocol people start and say, Abba, Sonny, Abba, you are looking at me, okay, Sonny, we entered car together with you. You don't know difference. My parents suffered for years. I was still anointed and liberating many families. For years, it grieved my spirit. Did you know that in all my years of ministry, I've only ministered in my state. Aside from crusades we organized, I've only ministered once in my own state. There are few places in this country I've not gone to, but in my own state, only once. You see that? This can be reasons why people don't receive. From the day, see, this is not human worship. By the grace of God, we respect. It's childishness. If an elderly person, someone older than you can give birth to you, is respecting your grace, and you are now bragging, you are a child. There is not demonic possession. The, the remedy is just to grow up. But let me tell you something. You must open up your heart and receive. Praise the Lord. Are you receiving something? This could be probably part of the reason why some of you are not blessed. Every time you are receiving the word, you are just looking and saying, oh yeah, yeah, again. And you are remaining where you are. The anointing reacts to honor. brother. When God has put a man over your life, he's not your friend. He's not your colleague. 
it is in an attempt to express this point that certain men of God raise themselves. But the Bible says, do not exalt yourself more highly than you ought to be. There are people I will never joke with. I can be smiling with them. But the moment I want to beckon in the capacity of their anointing and call, I bring myself to my proper position. This is what some of you have been missing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give spiritual instructions here to help you. Read a particular book. Pray. Throughout this week, go and you just laugh. See, your adherence to instructions. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those who find and help to their flesh. This is the reason why some of you are not receiving results. You're not participating in the things that can build you because you don't believe. But tonight, I pray that God will give us the heart to be doers of the word. Not just hear us deceiving ourselves. Because in the end, you are the one who will suffer it alone. I believe the word of God. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you so I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you I believe this word we're going to pray in the next five minutes listen and I don't know how you're going to cry unto God but you're going to tell him Lord I'm making up my mind hold on hold on hold on hear the prayer point first I'm making up my mind to be a doer of the word. You're going to honestly repent and say, Lord, I've not been tightened. I'm not faithful. See, when, when you are honest before God and you say, Lord, you are, not a you are not an unjust God. Truly, I've not been obedient to your principles. You don't pray. You don't speak the word. We talk about speaking the word. Many of you just feel this is for children. Look at what your life is. Look at what your life is. Anything comes and goes. Hallelujah. But tonight we are going to pray. We are going to say, Lord, I'm not ready to tell lies again. I, I leave this aspect of the word, but I'm not serious in this aspect. Some of us is in the aspect of character. You can pray, you can fast, but character. You've never sat down to work on it. It's not an issue. Hallelujah. Some of us is love. Some of us is the spirit of excellence. We keep saying these things. You're not going to hear anything new. These are the principles that have made great people. But let me tell you something. Listen. There must be a resolve in your heart. God supplies the grace. But you are the one who will make the resolve. The Bible says the prodigal son came to himself. No preacher preached to him. The prodigal son did what? Came to himself. Some of us may need to come to ourselves today. And attack some things out of your life. Pornography. Immorality. Hallelujah. Falsehood. Every kind of thing that is not consistent with Christ. You're going to make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. This is what your principle says. And no matter what it will cost me, I lay down pride. I lay, listen, see, look up. It's not difficult. 
just resolve that you are going to be a genuine Christian. Is that too much for you? Is it too much for you to say, I'm going to mean business with God? Every principle that I am taught with childlike faith, I'm going to walk. See, listen. I remember one time I was teaching someone how to drive. This guy was learning. Before I finish saying something, he would say, I know, I know. I will say, okay, drive it and I will turn. And you just do blunders. I know, I know. If you find yourself in that attitude, you are on your way to doom. There are some of us, that's what has caused you into trouble. I know, I know everything. I know, pray, I know, I know this, I know that. Shut up and sit down and learn. When I see people say things about me and I see certain people, great leaders in the body of Christ that I respect and I admire, and I see the dimensions they are operating in, I feel like a child and a toddler. And I maintain that posture of humility, accepting that there are so many things I need to learn and know. And I humble myself and take it. There are many of us, the last time you made progress in your life was years ago because everything you know. You are sinking. They are saying, give me your hand. You say, I know. Are you joking? I can swim. You are dying. Bring your hand for help. I know. That's how many people are. That's how many of our parents are. God has raised some of you as saviors, but every time you want to speak to them, I know they are dying. I know. This is not an issue of medication. They've spent millions on the treatment. Get to a place where you will be free. I know. Don't worry. We have things under control. Run away from that demonic attitude. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. I hope someone received something tonight. This message is preparing us for the miracle service. In the next five minutes, listen. In the next five minutes, I like us to, if you want to lie down, you want to cry instrumentalist, I want you to really play. We are going to cry unto God in the next five minutes and say, Lord, I've not been practicing the word in this aspect and this aspect. There's no demon stopping my progress. I'm the one. I must admit it. And you're going to pray. Lift your voice. Please don't look at anybody inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, cry unto him. Say, Lord, I know many of the principles that would have brought me prosperity that would have brought me grace that would have brought me increase I've not made up my mind to pay the price and live by these principles lift your voice and pray don't deceive yourself again the bible says be ye to us be ye to us there are issues in your life You've been afraid of confronting. What you don't confront, you don't conquer. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I've not been praying for weeks. I've not been praying for months. I look like I'm a prayer warrior, but I've been deceiving myself. I've not given up wrong associations. I want to, but I've not given them up. Lift your voice and pray. I will not deceive myself. I vow to be a practitioner of kingdom principles. No matter what it will cost you. No matter what it will cost you. Rakata baga sataya, mambra teka reko sapa, rabaka preska perie da balaba, rapa prosko preske pati alaba. We are praying inside and outside just five minutes. Hallelujah. Listen, you know what rebellion is? Rebellion is the willful, perpetual and continuous state 
of walking in non-compliance with the principles of God. Although you know, let me tell you something, if you don't do something about it, one day your life will be written Ichabod. The glory will rise gradually, for you will arise like Samson. The strength of many men have disappeared because they lack the stature to stay and continue in the spirit. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Abakaraba setala baradadadada. Sera bakareaba shapra karabalaba. Rakata paka prosa. We're rounding up. Make sure you're praying. Help me. Help me. Help me. I want to practice every truth that I know. That's the only evidence that you believe it. Challenge yourself tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Say, I will practice every truth I know. Whatever truth I hear, I believe it. I receive it. I walk in the truth. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel condemned. You may be convicted, but don't feel condemned. God is always a faithful God. And he's willing to help you. One more minute, we're rounding up. Rakata go soto pakata. Le pros ke pariketa. Ranto pres ke le shataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one quick prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace to live and walk in the truth of God's word. No matter how hard it is that I walk in it until it becomes a habit. Until it becomes a habit. Whether it's tithing, whether it's speaking the word, whether it's your study of God's word, studying books that will develop you. You know these principles. Get the tapes, get the teachings. Share them again. Practice them. Lift your voice and cry for grace. Lord, release grace upon us. Grace, unwavering committer to walk by your principles. No matter what happens, you are faithful. You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should repent. We can take you by your word. You are trustworthy. You are reliable. We need not trust any other thing. Hallelujah. Look up. Look up. See, many of you need to go back home and go and talk to some of your loved ones. All those, all those renewal covenants and those devilish things you go and do, that they bring whatever prophet to your house. You know that those things are wrong. You must not walk in rebellion. It's time for you to demonstrate the sincerity of your committer. The things you used to do, you can't do it again and say you are the same. Don't just say I'm the righteousness of God. No. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. Even if Satan accesses a life, access was given to him. You will be ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. This message, as simple as it is this night, I pray that it will ring in your spirit. I pray that you will not just be emotional about it. Take action. Some of you will need to call some friends and tell them you've been nice, but I'm really sorry. We cannot continue again. We are not going the same place. Say, what if they say I'm bad? That's the problem. You can't find yourself everywhere doing everything and say you are going somewhere. No, no. Great people don't behave like that. You've got to be different. It may cost you your reputation. It may cost you misunderstanding. You focus. With time when your light shines, everyone will see it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's any sister here that you are around any guy who is sleeping around and doing everything, whether he's a pastor, pope, bishop, leave him this night. Send him a text message and tell him, Pastor, 
I respect the grace of God upon your life, but I'm really sorry. I'm ready to be serious with God. Or brother or whatever, make up your mind to live by the word of God. Make up your mind. This is in preparation for the mighty things God is going to be doing on Friday. You must be ready to do it, to be a doer. Many of us, God stopped giving us instructions a long time ago because if he tells you, you don't even do it. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, as a family, we pray. We want to be authentic Christians. We want to be genuine. And Lord, we are asking you to help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that genuine, honest committer for God his ways for obedience practicing principles that cut across every sphere of our lives our spiritual lives our finances the anointing excellence whatever principle help us remove a heart of stone oh God and give us a heart of flesh tonight let the spirits of men stop struggling with you in the name of Jesus Christ and whoever is under the sound of my voice who has become a prey to Satan as a result of negligence, I set you free tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I silence the voice of the accuser over your life. I declare and I say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood speaks mercy which is higher than judgment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God will destroy any appetite for disobedience to his word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I separate you from godless associations. I pray for grace that as you go back home, what needs to be destroyed will be destroyed. What needs to be deleted will be deleted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you come to this place again and again, and these three things do not happen in your life, we are wasting your time. Please leave. If you come here again and again and again and these three things do not happen in your life, I can assure you do something better with your time. Number one. Transformation. If the word of God is not changing you, I'm not just talking about born again. If the word of God is not changing you, if the word of God is not changing your character, your attitude, your mindset, hallelujah, if you've been coming here for a while and you still hold on to the ideologies that you've had, if there is nothing that is compelling you to change, to drop those old ideologies, be it cultural, be it religious, be it demonic, be it worldly, be it carnal. If there is no force that compels you to lay down the ideology that you've had, then you are not growing. Hallelujah. When a man truly has an encounter with God, one of the things that must happen is transformation. 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 A change of mindset. A change of values. A change of ideology. A change of perception. Something must happen to your mentality. Listen, the word of God is a programming. The word of God is a programming. I told us last week i went somewhere for a, a crusade and they were asking me they say what is the advice to nigerian youth i said i don't have any advice for the nigerian youth the nigerian youth they don't need an advice they need a programming a change are you getting my point now a change let me have someone aaron good to see you hallelujah watch this if this is the direction Aaron is headed, all right? If he's following this direction, I hope you know that he's taking this step based on a mindset. Is that true? 
based on an ideology based on a conviction whether academic whether cultural whether religious it doesn't matter now what the word of god does is that when you collide with god through his word there must be a force from the word greater than the force that was initially driving you and that force changes your state this is what we call repentance to repent is not just to confess your sin to repent is to lay down the ideology that take you into that realm and bring you into a new philosophy so that we can look at you and see that your thinking pattern has changed let me tell you if your thought life does not change if your mindset does not change you can limit god in your life hallelujah the bible says they limited god in the wilderness as mighty as god is a man's mentality can limit god for a long time god wanted to bless abraham but the mindset of the traditional worship the mindset of the culture he was coming from limited god god kept beckoning on him i want to make you a father of nations i want to make you great but abraham's mind could not cooperate with that which the spirit wanted to do and one day the lord said abraham come out of your house I I need to do something to your mind to align with my purposes for your life abraham come out he said now look at the stars let me give you something to play around with and when he tried counting the stars he said can you count them he said no he said so shall thy seed be finally abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah the power of God is not short to change and bring miracles and breakthroughs. It's just that we have been taught. And, and, and it's my job in the body of Christ to always address imbalances and error. On one side, we've been taught that everything depends on God. You have no role to play. You just be born again and there is a smooth ride. Common sense teaches you that it does not make sense. Are you following me now? Then on the other hand, we have men who are struggling just using concepts alone and human philosophy, forgetting that there must be a God factor in the equation of your life. Both extremes are very, very wrong. All through scripture from Genesis to Revelation, there has always been a partnership between God through his spirit and a willing vessel that can pay the price and allow his mindset to subscribe to the higher values of heaven hallelujah the difference between brother a and brother b is not the color of their skin is their degree of alignment to the holy spirit how much they have submitted their mindset to take up the higher mindset of the values listen the bible says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts is that true and and that word the, the the greek word word there word of god is logos it means the thoughts of god so the word of god gives you his ideology when you read my books you study my persuasions you study my convictions is that true so if you stay long enough with my books and you open up yourself to the influence of my thought patterns you will begin to think like me even if you've never met me we will talk as though we've been together this is the ministry of the word it's not just to make us speak christian language no the word of god is supposed to transcend it produces a force that force compels your mind to change to align to spiritual things so that when god wants to pass through your life your ideologies will not resist him hallelujah bless you Aaron. everybody say transformation are you being transformed it's not enough to come to church and sit down and keep writing is the word of god changing you you can limit the power of the word of god some of you can choose to walk out of this place wow nice sermon so this is how koinonia is like wonderful i'm impressed i'm blessed that can be your the the, the things that you are carrying back home and someone else can sit down and say lord 
I'm aware that my mindset is the reason why I am where I am. My mindset has been limiting your work in my life. You want to bless me, but there's something in my life that resists you. You want to lift me. You want to make me great. But there's something and I'm aware. So I come to man. He needs to step into your soul realm and take complete charge of your mind your mindset so that your ideologies are a derivative of the word of god not culture there are aspects of culture that are good there are aspects of culture that are devilish devilish they were crafted out by wicked men sponsored by spirits that are not under the influence of the spirit of god and many of us have grown up with these ideologies and although you've gone to school although you are working although you are married that mindset is stopping god from doing certain things in your life many of us have gotten mindsets by from our past you have a mindset concerning fatherhood you have a mindset concerning marriage you have a mindset concerning money concerning prosperity concerning poverty concerning god concerning the holy spirit these are all mindsets that have been given unto us by a system that does not honor God so when we come into his presence we do not come just to say Lord add to what I have sometimes you need to say Lord open me up like a surgery right and pick out everything that does not align with your divine pattern everybody say transformation listen if the word of God is truly changing you then regardless of the fact that Aaron is from Kaduna state and Ken is from the east you should have similarities in mindset because you have you have laid down your personal culture to pick up the excellence of the culture of a higher kingdom hallelujah but the issue is that many of us love seeing the power of God we love seeing the grace of God we love seeing people fall under the anointing and miracles happen and there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that is the word of God changing you the, the decisions you made last year if you still make those decisions today in spite of the power of God's word then that's what they call frustrating the grace of God hallelujah the Bible says the days of our ignorance God overlooks right so if you do not know God can create a system by his mercy to help you but where the word of the Lord comes it comes to build you it comes to take you out of your current position hallelujah say I allow the word of God to change me say it i allow the word of god to change me the worst evil you can do to yourself is to hold on to your mindset hold on to what you had that made you such a failure it was the failure that brought you to the presence of god and now god is saying lay down this thing pick up another culture that can take you your ministry is grounded because of a mindset that is keeping you lay down that mindset and pick up another your marriage is not working because there is a mindset that is keeping you your relationship is not working because there is a mindset men run away from you because there is a mindset women run away because there is a mindset the power of God is far favor is far from your life because there is an ideology that stands as an antichrist but when you come to God's presence it tells you lay down this mindset lay down this mindset that's your own responsibility to say Lord all my life I've been taught that you must be a hustler to make it hit it left right and center I saw my father hustling I saw my mother hustling I saw my elder ones hustling and God says uh -uh, the kingdom of God is not haphazard come and let me teach you how the economic system of the kingdom works and you're like Lord is there even a system and he says yes there is you can walk circumspectly hallelujah 
all your life you've always known that if a lady wants to marry she'll go to a herbalist with the picture of the person he wants to marry and one goat that's all you've seen people around you dragging goats to herbalist to chain a brother and force him to get married that's how you know it to be done now you are ready to get married and they say oh yeah where is your own goat and god is saying uh-uh uh-uh he says seek out of the book and read none shall want her mate so a new ideology starts coming and i'm telling you if you are changing it will create blessings and create persecutions at the same time because you live in an environment with people who have refused to change so your change begins to frustrate them if they are not fighting you you are not changing are you hearing what i'm saying something must change about your life everyone is used to bribing if you want job give this person through the back door fifty thousand, and they tell you look we're all christians in fact i'm a pastor as you see me like this we all did it and the moment you want to do that a scripture rises up in you something changes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am and a scripture wells up in you what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness and you turn and tell them i'm going to cry but my god will give me this job i will not bribe anybody no bribery and they say look at how stupid you are talking nigeria this thing has been there he said uh -uh, i may be a nigerian but i function from another realm there is a kingdom that sponsors my life and i'm an ambassador and i can call on the embassy i represent it may take a while i may look stupid but god is able to make it happen the moment you speak you mount pressure on god because he's the one you are representing and for the sake of his reputation you cause him to step down but many of us are ashamed at such points you say i went to school how can i start talking about embassy heaven i please let's let's be reasonable what is fifty thousand? hallelujah before now your ideology has been the quickest way to be rich is pin down one rich man just find a rich, even if he's not born again you will change him pin him down force him to marry you that's how they've been taught and there are many people here as you are sitting down some is your parents they've indirectly warned you they say have we not suffered in this life you say yes we have suffered say do you want us to continue like this they say no sir say talk complete the puzzle by yourself what they are telling you indirectly is that no matter how born again this brother is once he has not arrived the promises are not there pack your load and go and some of you that's how you are looking and god is sending a very godly brother you are seeing him pray here he's sweating in your presence he's hearing the word of god that can change but because he has not gotten to canaan while you are sitting down kicking away men you will see a quick work that god will do in him all of a sudden saul who was a slave or a, 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 a somebody else will come in power and glory and you will now look and say ah oh god why didn't you show me a vision that this guy would change so fast say mindset say it some of you are already angry it's too early i've not started preaching it's too early this night could it be that there is a mindset that is frustrating you there are many pastors who are suffering and struggling in ministry because their mindsets about ministry will never change i said it last week they are looking for lifting quickly they want everybody to call them a pastor you call them aaron and say aaron you didn't add pastor that's a mindset because you think that is the title that gives the dignity He said, if you call yourself the children of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. Prove that you are the children of Abraham indeed. 
You don't move around saying, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm a teacher. He said, let her walks speak for her at the gates. Who is God speaking to tonight? Your mindset is limiting him. Your mindset is limiting God. Your mindset is limiting God. Every brother that comes to marry you, something happens and he leaves. We have prayed for you. We knew the day you were delivered. So we are sure you are delivered. But things have not changed. That means there is a mindset problem. Listen, it's not everything that is demons. You must learn to take responsibility. Many of us receive solace in the fact that demons, when you hear them say it's not your fault, you say, yes, I've always known. It's your fault this night. You must take responsibility. I've always known from my father's house they want to kill me. But you were delivered. Everybody saw that God changed you. Why have things not changed? Because your mindset is a bigger demon, an antichrist that is standing between Canaan and Egypt. Hallelujah. There are Christians who still cheat in the exam hall. They say, forget it. I saw a pastor doing it with my own eyes. Ah, I even know him. If I mention his name, I saw him. So what? Hallelujah. What about living all kinds of immoral life? In the world, the primary purpose of relationship is for immorality. It's not even for marriage. It's just a, an official way of looking for a partner to be sleeping around with so when a guy thinks he doesn't have enough courage to look around for ladies he goes to find somebody and say okay we're in a relationship they don't even know where they are going hallelujah and there are believers who love god some of you are here you are looking at me you see i'm not condemning you but i'm saying that 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 god must come face to face with the world and when it comes one must bow you cannot embrace these things and say let's go together it can go we can walk it no you cannot walk it light and darkness cannot stay in the same place don't say it does not matter let me tell you the truth if you want to see the authentic glory of god in your life no it matters and i always say this because many of us here are young people don't let anybody fool you and say everybody is doing it no sir there are people who have tapped into a higher law the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord until you climb that hill it does not look like it's possible are you getting my point i counsel people i talk to people and there are people who come and say i love god but i women hey I, I can't see women i don't ah, is, is it really true that there are people who are keeping themselves it's not by determination hallelujah if it's by determination maybe i would have had children that that would do children's service for koinonia but there is a grace that takes you so although you are human people say i beg jerry you are flesh and blood no but there is a spirit that lives inside you the bible says know ye not that your body listen choose to believe this this night don't let it sound childish to you choose to believe if it was not possible god would be a wicked person for putting that as a principle hallelujah transformation there are some of us who can kill for money that's your own mindset you overcame ladies from bed you don't even have a problem with ladies because you you want to make it even if a lady stands naked in your front once there's no money on her you are living you are not the devil can the devil has been defeated when it comes to that one but money ha, ha, ha. you can be dying if they wave money you come back to life there are people like that they love money they can just put money on their table and just be looking at it like this they are not using it it's, it's doing it's like a drug they are taking your worst time in church is when they say giving of all sorts even if they don't mention you the fact that somebody else is going to drop money you take it personal 
you are not giving but just seeing that money is leaving somebody is it, paining you something is moving in your body advise this guy to take it back it's a spirit it's a dangerous spirit hallelujah there are many of us who have certain mindsets of laziness laziness hallelujah a man will sleep till one o'clock in the afternoon you are a man when do you want to marry next year till one o'clock you are still sleeping and you will see one of our sisters who has been trusting god preparing herself like a bride for a very nice person you just believe that because we say hug one another in koinonia it gives you a license to just get up carelessly and just go and meet a sister and say shabby they said let's get to know one another no are you preparing for that future i'm challenging you tonight say transformation what mindset have you refused to drop down romans chapter 12 Can you imagine that I've not even touched my message? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Say the word of the Lord is changing me. Say it is changing me. It's building me. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Let's just turn there. I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be ye what be ye how do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind you get transformed when you take your mind to the theater of the spirit and a surgery is performed the spirit of god himself and the surgical knife is the word of god that is able to cut across the bones and the marrows and it opens you up and begins to edit your life and when it is done you come back a brand new person hallelujah there are many of us those around you who are unbelievers there's no pressure that your life is bringing to them in fact they are more they are comfortable a guy can i'm not talking of condemnation and just pointing fingers at people and say you are going to hell no but that there is an illumination that your transformation can bring to anybody that is not serious with god that if somebody's prayer life is dying he doesn't even need to tell you all he needs to say is can i come and spend weekend in your house or in your room and they are so sure that at the end of three days something will change in their lives hallelujah there are some channels if you are walking in sin you will never want to turn to those channels perpetually 24 hours you will hear a message almost immediately within a space of five minutes that will judge you dove tv redeemed rtm you know that once you are doing something wrong you want to look for another channel that can accommodate what you are doing when you turn to those ones you hear papa Adebo, just give five minutes something is already flogging the nonsense in you can your life be like that that people are gossiping and and talking stories about others and as soon as you step in everybody just keeps quiet because a true ambassador stepped in one who will not compromise not that when you step in say hey come add add to this discussion what what were you even saying that they know hallelujah that in your office when they are mentioning men and women of integrity 
your name must be mentioned and they know that no if you want to throw this person try it another way bribery will not work even if it means him being demoted just forget it there is no issue of having a meeting with him it will not happen come on now listen if this is not happening in this place then we are wasting our time i don't care how many people fall on the ground roll on the ground even if you float in the air if it does not translate to transformation in your life then we are lying somewhere hallelujah so is your mindset changing ask your neighbor say is your mindset changing what did he tell you ask him who can verify that you are changing you can't call somebody that you bought something for in the afternoon to verify whether you are changing or not the answer will certainly be yes your enemy is the only person with the right to testify whether you truly fear God or not it was Satan that came to testify about Job is that true Satan himself he said ah no come on now I've seen a man Job Satan the father of all liars a man's integrity compels Satan to tell the truth he said I know I'm a liar I can twist things but this one there's nothing I can say against this man may that be your testimony that somebody can look at you and say I know I hate Ken let me tell you I hate him but when you are talking about a man who is a Christian indeed I'm an, I, I'm an unbeliever as you see me I don't fear God I, let me go to hell but I can tell you this person have you seen people like that they don't respect God they look at you and say see see cigarette in my pocket but I can point to you who are the real men of God and you even be talking it was in Antioch when unbelievers called this set of people Christians those who were behaving like Christ not religiously something had happened to them see if your mindset does not change and you are trying to fake it it will frustrate you are you getting what i'm saying one day you will be tired if you don't have a revelation of giving and you are giving 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 one day when there's nobody you say kai i'm tired honestly thank god this my wicked roommate is not going to follow me for koinonia today i'm tired that's how you can see many people serve in the body of christ immediately they leave to another geographical location within two or three months they've changed in a way you'll be like uh -uh, this brother used to lead prayers what suddenly happened they really did not get it i'm telling you there is a way you get it it becomes like a cancer in you no matter how much you fall you can't go too far the, the fraternity is too much it's like a cult when you see people claim to love God and two months away from an environment of God's presence, they just change. They really did not get it. You can be among believers, I hope you know, doing what everybody is doing. But everybody knows the foundation and the root where he is standing. And the Bible says, let he that stands take heed lest he fall. So number one, transformation. Number two, Three things that must happen in your life you're ready number two is that your life must bear fruits it must produce results write it fruits results the fruit in a tree is a sign that that tree has been well nourished and that it is alive and growing Jesus caused a fig tree not because he did not see green leaves he caused the fig tree because it was taking up nutrients from the earth but it was not producing fruits your life must prove that god is at work in you not just by transformation 
transformation is good we talk about character and conformity but there must be results in your life everyone say results bishop oyedeko said the end of every argument is proof you don't argue with proof are you getting my point now when john the baptist sent that they should go and ask jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus did not even answer he just turned started healing the sick casting out devils he said go and tell john what you have seen is this not the evidence that was given to him in the wilderness that the messiah would do now see me doing it why are you asking again hallelujah when you are a christian and you are excellent in your job they give you a task to do you do it with with a dimension of intelligence that is not known to those people there is a proof there are you hearing what i'm saying when you keep loving god and you get to a point look let me tell you if you serve god with time everything around your life should change i'm not one of those people who believes that you should just sit down of course in the process there are lots of things to contend against but with time there must be fruit that sign upon your life that god is with you even if you work for the devil even if you work for the devil one day ultimately he's going to destroy you but at least in the interim you will reap the death the bed the evidence of allegiance is that true there are all kinds of worldly people who are bowed to Dagon and although they are going to hell if they do not repent but in the interim they are enjoying heaven on earth at least that's the consolation to keep them satan took jesus to a mountain and said jesus if you will bow to me i promise you ah yeah i have i've not started preaching no that's the problem you will just look now and see that it's past nine I wish there was a way I can throw all these clocks out of this, this place. There's so much in my spirit to share. Hallelujah. Everybody say results. Say proofs. If you claim God is calling you in a healing ministry, it's okay that when we start, nothing is happening. But with time, there should be the signature of God upon your healing ministry. I do not know any healing evangelist who organizes a crusade and God does not confirm it. If he's a true healing evangelist, somebody should be sick. Somebody should arise from the wheelchair. I do not know one true person who carries the apostolic spirit of God, who struggles with fear and timidity and does not have the power of faith and the work of god in their lives i do not know one person like that except they are just talking stories are you getting what i'm saying say after time in the name of jesus may my life produce results many of you this is the level you are right now the reason why nobody has listened to you or subscribe to your ideologies is because they have not seen the benefit is that true and and, and and i want to be very honest with you benefit in every area of life financially maritally job wise in every area of your life no matter how critical people are let me tell you proof can close the mouth of anybody are you getting me you can criticize a man the greatest way to respond to your critics is not by answering don't waste your time they are determined not to understand keep trailing the proofs let the works keep speaking at the gates a point will come those they are talking to will say i'm tired of hearing your stories you waste your own proof hallelujah when jesus hung upon the cross about to die the bible says the atmospheric condition the climate just changed and those who looked there they just remembered and truly they acknowledged even in death they saw something there are many of us it will just take one proof everybody say one proof one proof for every unbeliever in your house to bow down 
they've grown in poverty they've suffered in poverty although that's not an ultimate reason to push them to god but trust me prosperity can bring men to god hallelujah when every herbal medicine has failed when every blood substance they they tied in the leather and they told your father to choke in the pocket of all his trousers to bring prosperity when he has put it in every pocket and it refused to bring prosperity and you come teaching the principles of the kingdom and things begin to change come on now you don't argue with proofs hallelujah may your life produce results in the name of jesus christ May you not be like the barren fig tree. A fig tree with green leaves. That means they are seeing you coming for koinonia. Every week. Every week. To an extent that others can look at you and mock you. And say where is your God? I prophesy to you your God is coming through for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your God is coming through to silence every pharaoh that attempts to mock your god your life will produce result in the name of jesus christ results i believe in results i believe in results many of you are here by the grace of god not necessarily because you love me of you don't even love me at all you don't plan to it's just that you need the results hallelujah but you are still welcome and the power of god is such that the results can be reproduced again and again and again that's why i love the anointing of the holy spirit you don't need to refrigerate it you don't need to give your neighbor to keep it for you and collect it on except you use talisman That's why I worship him. Take his presence and his glory out of my life. Many of you will see me on the street and pass as if you just saw a tire on the floor. That's why I feel sad for people who want to come out of inferiority and complex and kick, they kick God out of the equation and they believe they will be able to rise without him. Impossible impossible if you are tired of your condition the greatest way is to embrace god first hallelujah because god will take you out of every situation results your life must bear fruits in the name of the lord jesus christ say my life must bear fruit go ahead pray in one minute pray in one minute i don't just want us to talk it as stories my life must bear fruit shake at ba 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 my life must bear fruit my life must bear fruit i've been born again for many years no soul has come to the kingdom as a result of my life lord i'm tired i've been praying for the sick I don't have one verifiable testimony let this change oh god everyone i've prayed for for breakthrough they've returned with worse situations instead of making it better but lord i've told them you are with me change my story the finance of my family has not changed lord i'm not loving you just because of finances but if my finances change my father will follow me to church if my finances change if my loved ones get admission they will come to know you for their sake oh god let there be results in my life please pray i sense that god wants us to pray on this issue my life must bear fruits my life must bear fruits 
my life must bear fruit oh god i'm tired of a barren and unfruitful christian life my ministry is not growing pray because there's no proof my god people come and they leave if there are real miracles if there are real transformations they will come and stay everyone mocks my family in spite of our spirituality because they have not seen god change our level turn again oh god the captivity of zion like the streams of the negev let men see an evidence that god is with us pray say lord let the marriage come even if it is to prove that jesus is alive to prove that the witches and the wizards and the devils in my village do not have the final say lord i know that there is a cause of poverty that lingers in my family but i've confessed your word that it is broken let it show in my life as a testament so that idol worship can stop in my family we have no right to tell men to stop going to herbalist if we cannot produce the proofs that god is with us we have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get children if we cannot heal the body we have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get money if we cannot prove that god prospers people lift your voice and pray get angry change my story change my story oh god i have served you in spite of the result but tonight i hold on to you change my story pray koinonia there is a spirit of intercession that has come upon the house pray change my story change my story change my story prove a point with my life make me an object of prayer silence the voice of wicked men many a day that rise up against me many a day that say where is his help but i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth oh god let there be a difference between those that serve you and those that do not serve you come on saints of god travel for your destiny there must be an evidence you have been transformed but there are no results there are no results men have a right to speak against your god lord hasten my miracle come on pray hasten my miracle hasten the breakthrough please pray god is answering people in this place lord give my father the job although my auntie is past menopause give her a child as a sign and a wonder that god is alive although my sister is 40 years old give her a husband that men may know that god is alive although my father was sacked from the job give him another one oh god to prove that you may be a prophet over my family lord you have vowed to increase my greatness produce results in my life come on koinonia pray produce results in my life that can silence men produce results that can prove that my god is alive i love him more than the results but in this season i desire to see the result command it command it increase my greatness let the blind see through my hands oh god for your glory pray let the wheelchair arise to silence principalities and powers 
open the heavens oh god and let prosperity come upon my life where i'll be rejected no man wants to identify with me make me an eternal excellency come on are you praying koinonia and a joy of many generations hallelujah 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 we'll take one prayer point before we settle down you're going to pray and say lord every power that stops my miracles from the heavenlies so that men will keep mocking my god tonight i command you to give way come on lift your voice and pray daniel prayed for 21 days the angel came and said daniel from the first day that you set yourself to pray your prayers were answered but the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, pray i subdue powers i subdue powers that operate in the heavenlies territorial spirits i subdue powers in the heavenly realms i subdue powers workers of evil you must bow there is fire in my life there is fire in my destiny to burn every chaff everything god has not planted shake it off shake it off shake it from your life i shake away witchcraft i shake away divination i shake away enchantment come on now shake it off in the name of jesus no power can stand i am an infant of fire no enchantment no curse can stand against my destiny pray your prayer will bear fruits it will produce results pray the effectual fervent prayer Repetekete is our season of greatness. We went war against poverty. We went war against sickness. We went war against the works of darkness. It's our season to arise. Come on now, pray. Make your life too hot for the devil. Make your life too hot for witches and wizards. Make your life too hot for wicked spirits. Break the yoke from your neck. Break the yoke from your shoulders. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Tell the devil I stand in my priestly and my prophetic office. Tonight I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 There must come a time in your life where you stop getting afraid and rise up and say, Satan, I've had the word enough. I don't need to wait for Friday again. Come into my room like Mount Camel. Let's solve this problem once and for all. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. One more time, we are going to pray. Come on, pray. This is breakthrough prayers. This is breakthrough prayers. I sense the spirit of prayer and supplication. 
I feel an open heaven. I know when there is an open heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I taught you on the speaking blood. We are going to apply the blood of Jesus. You are going to say, Satan, this is the price to release my destiny. I invoke the blood. Come on now, Koinonia. I invoke the blood. Every sacrifice that has been born and made, I invoke the blood. The blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I challenge the gates of hell through the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Christ. Listen, come, let me have four people. Let me show you what prayer does in the spirit. Let me just have four people stand here. Just, just turn like this. Face it. Stand. Just stand behind. Watch this. Watch this. Someone come and hold this. Anybody? This is your miracle. This is your breakthrough, but watch this. Stand there. Please shift forward. Paul said, listen. He said, a great door and an effectual has been opened unto me. He said, but many, many, many are the adversities. These are the spirits. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places watch this the bible says if any man afflicted let him pray if any man afflicted let him pray when you begin to pray watch this there is a force 
there is a force of the spirit that begins to mount pressure 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 on all of these things it's an ability of the spirit you push through barriers by the power of god's spirit until you take what belongs to you listen listen that's why god gives you one of the reasons why he gives you the prayer language of tongues praying in your understanding will weary you after 20 minutes the bible says you may not understand the dynamics on how to confront this spirit but when you switch to that prayer language the holy ghost hey yeah, 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 yeah. the holy ghost listen when you begin to pray When your prayer life rises, the devil must let you go. If you come out praying, the devil will not let you go. If you come out praying, the devil hallelujah see listen there is a way you can pray you will know when you break through the reason is the truth is many believers don't pray hallelujah there is a way you can pray you will know your spirit is lifted from that realm you will know an audacity comes upon you you know you can shake off evil hallelujah one more prayer point before you sit down you're going to say in the name of jesus i take back everything the devil has taken from my family prophesy I'm <laughs> 
The hand of the Lord is upon me and I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the Spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now in the name of Jesus I command you let them go let them go right now let them go I prophesy breakthrough I command breakthrough in the name of the Lord Jesus I command breakthrough to your family breakthrough financial breakthrough In the name of Jesus, Amen. open heaven, open heaven, it's your season to rise, it's your season of greatness, every power stopping you, we challenge it tonight, in the name of Jesus, please sit down, God bless you, be seated. your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God see I tell you the power of God is I sense such a strong anointing resting on people as I teach God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways enough is enough God gave us a word he said I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching, but I hope I'll be able to touch. I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share. Let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year hallelujah light he said they that sat in nefta and zebulun have seen a great light a great light genesis 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them this man i hope you know that when he was speaking the woman was still in the man because man adam not the name of a man dust hallelujah man was first created body has thou prepared for me hallelujah and then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman but before then he blessed them and he said let them have dominion now listen it is in the character of the spirit that the same word that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass are you getting my point the bible says when at the brook cherith when the brook dried he told elijah the prophet he said get thee go down to zarephath he said there 
I have commanded a widow to feed thee. But the woman did not sound like God had informed her a prophet was coming. However, the same word that took Elijah to Zarephath was the same word that softened the heart of the woman. So when God gives you a word, the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when God said, let man have dominion, that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion. Hallelujah. God does not just speak empty talk. It's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money. So let's see how God equipped man to exercise dominion in reality. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. I wish we had time, but I'll just touch briefly wherever... Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man that he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. Now watch this. Everybody look up. The Bible says God made every other tree to grow from the ground. Are you following me? However, the Bible says there were two trees. Those trees did not grow from the ground. Follow me. Are you getting my point? The Bible says God made to grow every tree pleasant to the eyes. That is good for food. Then it says the tree of life also. Also. In the midst of the garden. And then he says, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Please follow me. I want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion. To eat of every tree, including the tree of life. Are you getting my point? The first revelation I want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger. Are you getting me? Adam could not be hungry. He was not in the fallen state. Are you getting me? In the realm of the spirit, you don't eat for, hung for hunger. You eat for impartation and knowledge. That's what food does in the spirit. Food does not satisfy hunger. No, no. When you eat food, like let's say in spiritually, now I'm not talking of all these demonic things that people, you saw yourself eating sweet in the dream. That's not what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger. Food does two things for you in Eden's atmosphere. One, it gives you knowledge. Two, it gives you impartation. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet was giving the word and he ate it. When he ate it, it did something to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now watch this. Everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge. That's not the topic. I want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent. One was the tree of life. The other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Another word was the, it, it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge. The word mystery just means hidden truths about a knowledge that God does not want his people to know. Not because he hates them. You must understand this. God does not want us to know everything. And then I will show you what the angels came and did. The fallen angels. When they came, they did something to the daughters of men. Are you getting me? They took from this forbidden knowledge and they began to feed mankind with it. Time. Praise God. God categorically warned man. He said, The trees in the Garden of Eden, every time you eat them, 
they will do something to you are you getting what i'm saying so if you eat of the tree of life it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion it gives life eating of that tree gives life are you getting me that's the mystery of eternal life adumbrated by that tree that's why when jesus came he said ah, ah man shall not live by bread alone if man wants to live he must keep eating something are you getting me so walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you there is something that must be done in you please listen and this is where i want to balance this is what where we get the concept of immortality how many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality now unfortunately many people brought the teachings but they did not understand how the operation immortality is not something you claim immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again it causes eternal life not just to translate from your spirit to your soul but to happen in your body and that's where you say oh death where is your sting are you getting what i'm saying now it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow are you getting me now that the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us this is why although the law of immortality is at work not many people will ever enter it the secret is not just prayer for long life the secret is intercoursing with this eternal life that was how adam was supposed to live forever are you getting my point now so by eating of the tree of life that was why when he fell god said no you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying if he ate of the tree of life salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of Moses, 11 books of Moses. How many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by Egyptians and written by all kinds of people? Have you heard of those kinds of things? How many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found? Now listen, if I don't teach you this because the Lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing when the angels do you know why god did not want man to know i hope you know that adam never knew adam never knew that before his coming there was a history hallelujah he had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil are you getting me adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with god and reproduce children after his kind when satan came into the garden satan did not make adam sleep with a dog no he knew that that would not get the agenda done he said man come there is one tree i want you to touch just taste it once it will do something to you are you getting what i'm saying now everybody say forbidden knowledge this is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft please hear me the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth are you getting me these were the informations that were given men like nimrod so they had super intelligence about certain things are you following me i want to shock you I hope you will believe me look at me did you know that most of our technological advancement are you getting me are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth 
are you getting me it had to be a supply of a level it's not just human discipline don't mind what all those books tell you just be hard working and think well no sir those people had interactions with beings is that how did solomon become extremely rich and blessed what happened to him god visited him from another realm is that not true they had a conversation listen this conversation is still happening in the earth till today are you following me let me share with you something very briefly i hope you believe me the bible says jesus was given the parable of the wheat and the tear is that true he said while men everybody while men hold on he says while men slept something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping now the sleeping is not bad we always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding no he meant literal sleep that means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake are you getting me jesus was telling us something powerful he says the moment men sleep some beings can walk into the earth and he said the enemy quickly comes plants something and goes his way so you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept and is somebody following me what happened who came and put it there while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor it says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men slept the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right not the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding dominion dominion is not just a function of i claim it there is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion are you hearing what i'm saying please are you getting something so this tree of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man are you getting me look, look at me when you open that book you will find good but you will not know when evil is planted in the good are you getting what i'm saying that's why a pastor can go and read the 12th book of moses or go and read scientology and be looking at it and saying wow so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards everybody say forbidden knowledge are you getting that now and then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say why not i add this knowledge to what i already have are you getting what i'm saying and they will seem to walk powerfully that is the forbidden knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sometimes we celebrate it what do we call it rema is that true and we bring all kinds of things i've heard about men of god and prophets and all kinds of people who do every kind of nonsense in the body of christ all kinds of magic happening everywhere i once heard of a man of god who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody he said look at me the person who looked at him became blind at once yes completely blind at once members were clapping people were running to come and drop seed 
I don't know what they were tapping into, but they were running and everybody was happy. Watch this. And then after the guy preached, 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open. And he said, for that reason, everything that is closed in everybody's life, you know, I, I open it and you see everybody just shouting, Amen. Listen. Let me tell you. Listen. Listen. Will people get results? They will get tremendous results. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws. But this is the point. Because it was not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit of God. Although it is correct knowledge, it is called witchcraft. So it's not about what produces result. It's about the Spirit of God initiating and sustaining that process hallelujah there are many teachings coming to the body of Christ men and women of God who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever and in the midst of this prayer because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy they had visitations but they were not of God however they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth and they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things and they came out from all of those experiences and you see power you see anointing but it is not initiated and sponsored by the spirit and the sign is number one the glory never goes to God such kinds of people never give God the glory because it is part of the agreement are you following me now it is God's desire that we grow the Bible even said knowledge shall increase but you must guard when the table is set before you you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life there is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up have you seen people hold on I want to say a few things that will challenge you have you seen a lot of people please i don't mean this for criticism or anything have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer have you have you seen those kinds of things that somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him i remember a lady years ago this lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours i was there abu secure this girl was just praying 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 she wouldn't listen to anybody i wish i knew what i know now and the thing confuses the body of christ hallelujah everybody say forbidden knowledge men of god if you're in ministry here you have to be very careful that that insatiable lust for rema and revelation you must guard carefully and let this that's why walking in the spirit is the secret it gives you life when you walk in the flesh you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful it leads men to death so the more revelation a man is getting the more he's dying not to self dying as a result of the absence of light see this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of god when you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation when there is so much word conferences happening conventions happening meetings happening rema upon rema bible study all kinds of things yet you do not see that that word is chaff it lacks the life to build people there is error i hope somebody is learning something here god put two trees and all the trees can supply knowledge for one it is the knowledge that brings life there are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life is that true there are certain teachings on deliverance that brings people into bondage 
because people added Bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards. Is that true? And they added everything. And they say, if you want the devil to run away from you, once it's nine o'clock, wear red. That, that one is not in the Bible. You see that? That is, that is deception dimension there. I, I, is somebody following what I'm saying? I apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry. I really apologize. I love the body of Christ, but I have to teach you the truth. So there is the biblical concept of deliverance, for instance. Then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards, begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit, knowing that Satan is the father of all liars. Are you getting my point now? And it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things. So when you want to pray for somebody, you look and say, uh -uh, I can't pray for you like this. You are wearing a black shoe. Change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my, my this thing for the power to work. This one is astrology and witchcraft. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Or you get all kinds of candles with different colors. This flame, that flame, this flame. And you say, now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as I drive this spirit. Uh-uh. This is called transcendental meditation. This is witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yet, you come and sit down in the midst of that candle something suddenly happens to you and you start taking first in the class all of a sudden your intelligence is heightened you think beyond your level and because you're hallelujah hallelujah thank you are you following my story please because you are getting results you will be encouraged are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful. Because many people are eating of the forbidden tree. They are eating right now, today, here and now. They are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results. Thank you. But that knowledge is not of God. Maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions. The moment you read those books, although they are blowing your mind, but something in your spirit starts checking. The Holy Ghost is telling you, uh-uh, when did you get into this? When did you get into this? And you see, these books are in our libraries. You can get them online. Many of you have watched every kind of thing. You see a man who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again Anytime God wants to take in and bring out of a man, sleep happens and God calls Adam to sleep. Hallelujah. Are you understanding this? We are talking about dominion through, through spiritual intelligence. The knowledge that leads to death. I'm going to share with you very importantly, very quickly, two laws. Even if it's just in five minutes. Wherever we stop, that's it for the night. Two important spiritual laws that can help us. I'm committed to making sure that God grants us spiritual intelligence. That we have knowledge. This is what makes you strong in the spirit. Prayer is good. But it's not just enough to pray. You must have knowledge. So that when you see things, you know what laws are in place. And you know what to do about them. Knowledge takes away ignorance. 
knowledge takes away shock from your life so that you are not surprised about anything when you hear that something has happened you don't just panic you understand hallelujah praise the name of the lord law number one is called the law of territory if you want to walk in dominion you must understand this law the law of territory everybody say the law of territory look up please dominion is territorial dominion is territorial even in the satanic organogram they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories there are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm it's not their territory of work are you getting me every time they are on the earth realm they are powerless there are certain demonic operations that are territorial i give you an instance when you go to certain territories in this nigeria you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory when you go outside of the territory it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again is that true and you go into another territory maybe it's drunkenness that is there you go to another territory maybe it's lust and immorality the operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial every man every kingdom citizen must know this abraham come out of your father's house come out of this territory where you are into a land that i will show you and if you do get to that land then i will bless you and you will be a blessing i will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed but that will only happen if you leave one territory to another everybody said dominion is territorial it's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand number two is that you must understand very very clearly that in the place of your assignment that is where you will exercise true dominion everything opens up for you at your assigned territory there is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life hallelujah this is what a lot of people do not understand please look up you must take out time to hear from god are you getting me as to where he wants you to be at every season not just what you want him to do for you but where your blessings are territorial and isaac sowed in that land genesis 26 from verse 12 and isaac sowed not just in any land although there was famine god told him this is your territory of dominion so in that land a man of god may go to zamfara and sit down and say zamfara is not a lucrative place let me run to abuja for ministry and he goes outside of territory are you getting my point and you see a man struggling in a land of plenty he's struggling yet you will see another man in the same zamfara blessings coming from people those who are born again and those who are not born again because you are in the place of your territory say the law of territory many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where god wants us to settle for every season it can change but that in every season there is a territory you miss your territory you will never walk in dominion because where god has assigned you he has commanded the ravens to feed you he has commanded the widow to attend to you are you getting what i'm saying i'll never forget when we finished the crusade in Jos, and the pfn people called me in the particular local government in Jos, and they said would you come and establish a branch of your ministry we'll give you an auditorium free 
and will give a few pastors to train i was happy i went to god god said you would die i told the pfl people god said i would die i'm really sorry i can't go as simple as that many of you would have said ah breakthrough god has buttered my bread and you will go there that's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a in a particular place and then they move to a place and it's as though god did not call them again favor is a sign that you are in the right place when i sent thee lackest thou anything when i sent thee lackest thou anything by the grace of god at this level of ministry i can tell you i am sure that we are in the place assigned that's why it doesn't matter what venue we use whether it is blue roof whether it is charity and faith whether it's whatever there seems to be grace backing us so many people have called me one lady said them and their family members they are praying that i must come to abuja they say relocate your level is bigger than zaria i said i appreciate you but i remember there was a man called ahitophel in scripture don't let people advise you out of your destiny they may be genuine they look at you and say kai zaria is it's too much for your level you say it's true just that what will we do and you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you you get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you there's no space for you you keep fighting and struggling with everybody moses said if your presence will not go with us let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us this may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents they got up because of looking for greener pastures they just packed their load and said lagos here we come 10 years now they are still suffering every door shuts at your face it's a sign to go back for retreat and say lord speak to me speak to me where am i missing it don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny i know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it they'll say are you joking in nigeria where there's no job but you must be careful you exercise dominion in the place of your territory your territory does not just mean the geography alone it means your jurisdiction of operation are you getting me if i go and enter the prophetic ministry right now as an office i'm not a prophet as an office i may operate in prophetic dimensions but god did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office your jurisdiction if i now say i'm going to come in and make sure i prophesy for everybody one by one i give you two weeks many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it you say oh god what is happening this guy is missing this thing there are many men of god who were called to be teachers or pastors but they they got outside of territory are you getting what i'm saying now there are other people who were called into prayer ministries their anointing is the anointing for intercession but they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions that's not wrong except that you have come out of territory everybody say territory you will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory your jurisdiction of operation there are certain dimensions of ministry if God instructs me to engage in, I will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them. It doesn't matter whether I can preach more than them. It doesn't matter whether I have more miracles than them. Uh -uh. It's about the grace and the dominion. When a man is in his area of territory, you will exercise dominion freely. You see why a lot of pastors are struggling. You go to a church and copy what a man of God is doing. You do not know his his ministerial packaging are you getting my point so many people who are pastors trying to do the work of apostles little persecution comes and they are crying they cannot move forward because see when god calls a man he equips you according to the office 
when you learn this law you will walk in dominion absolute dominion there are things i have no business doing if god gives me an instruction he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of christ watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body people struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation is someone getting blessed tonight your assigned territory god has honored you in the area of catering when it comes to catering you walk in dominion there the next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um building materials and you just get up and go there you say i'm supplying building materials your first supply there was trouble second supply 10 years down the line you are still struggling everybody say territory thank you jesus the second law and then we will pray this one is very important it is a law that you must believe in and walk in it it's called the law of exchange this is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange the law of exchange you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my lord you are my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me you gave your life to set me free and so i lift my voice to you in adoration listen how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money have you heard of that everybody say the law of exchange when you understand this law you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered when the bible says an eye for an eye have you heard that tooth for tooth i've studied it it's not like when i break your teeth you will break back my own to revenge are you getting me it's called compensation that means if i do something to you you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense are you getting what i'm saying it's called the law of exchange that's where we get trade by butter i give you a cow you must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow are you getting me that's why when man fell based on the justice of god god looked around to see what can be given he said if i give gabriel it's not enough if i give michael it's not enough do you know why because angels themselves are imperfect i hope you know it angels excel in light they excel in strength but they are still imperfect do you want me to show you job let's look at it one scripture you are the one who said i should show you Turn to the book of Job. Sorry about the time. We'll round up now. See, ba 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 ba. He could not give the angels because they are imperfect.
Job 4. Please project it. Job 4, verse 18 and 19. I want us to read it together. Job 4. Can we hurry up? Our time is... Job 4. Everyone read. Want to read. He charges angels with what? Verse 19. He said even his servants, he didn't trust them. And even the angels, he charged them with foolishness. How much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained? <laughs> so God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people. And so he looked at the perfect one, the sinless one, and said, you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire. Please listen to me. The same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ. He took Jesus to the mountain and he said, bow to me. In other words, let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me. Are you getting my point? Just bow to me. Since you are the expression of the Godhead, bow to me so that the Father will see you bowing to me and I can give you wealth. So when a man goes to meet a herbalist, it tells him what are you going to give me in exchange please listen i will tell you this is the reason why many territories are powerful this is why some of the terrorisms you see in nigeria are powerful they always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory that's why they do it military might irrespective are you getting my point when you come to god and say lord i want you to use me god says what is the exchange for it and he say lord take my life have you heard that scripture that says what shall it profit a man if he does what and what loses his soul that means he said satan let's do business and satan said of course i'm a good businessman i will give you my soul give me the world so that anywhere I do business, whether in Italy, whether in Dubai, let it work. So that I must be the governor of this state or I must be this, take my soul. So that I will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me. And he says, all right, let's have the deal. And he says, take my soul. They have received the mark of the beast. That's the 666 there. It's not something that will be put on their hand. They have given their soul. They have received the mark. Are you getting my point so satan comes to you what do you want to give in exchange please listen something must be given in exchange if you must walk in true dominion everybody knows this it's not a herbal strategy it's a spiritual strategy i'm walking in the anointing i'm walking in by the grace of god because i received this of grace but something went for it my life my will my ambitions my desires they were laid down that's why i wrote that song take all of me all of me you have my everything that's my deal with god you have my everything are you getting me so my entire life will give him glory the day i compromise on my own part of the deal his mercy will show up but if i walk in rebellion i have broken the deal that's the reason why a man can give an exchange he will say i will give you my firstborn only give me this political position when the firstborn is now born the people come and say oh yeah oh, we gave you the power we gave you the wife where is our firstborn and you say sorry I didn't realize that children are this nice. I've changed my mind. They say you've changed your mind. We will see. All of a sudden, the child starts getting sick. They must collect their child. Except the power of God intervenes. This is the reason why many families are suffering. People covenanted families in exchange for money. Kings covenanted their territories. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They gave it in exchange for protection. 
they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what i'm saying this is the law that terrorists use before they ever carry an assignment they must take out time are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood people become richer think about it the moment blood is shed somebody makes money exchange 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 are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of solomon touched the lord he offered a thousand bond offerings it was an expression of his heart god could not stop he came down many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life you are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength but tonight how many people are ready to say lord take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a harbor list and see if you just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some Christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion I've said it again and again nothing just happens the day Jesus will come we have a long wall film to watch that's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences hallelujah listen let me tell you something I will never forget one time I was praying in the night years ago and I prayed and I was dedicating my body unto God I stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and I lay down on the floor I said Lord let this body become a superconductor of your anointing if there is anything you can do to this mortal body let it carry your power this body cannot be used for sin and hell it, it I dedicate it unto you and God said this is what you are giving me I will put my glory upon your life and somebody just comes and says, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the, Lord, the demons are just looking and saying, look at all these ignorant people. These are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens. Are you getting me? Many intelligent people. They said, give us, give us technology. Give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old. Give us and let us do supernatural things in exchange. We will give you the souls of men we will give you mankind we will give you a lot of things and it's happening here in the earth that's why you can see a man sitting down all of a sudden within two weeks this man becomes a mysterious millionaire either god has done something to him or the devil has done something there was an exchange somewhere a man of god is sitting down and all of a sudden power comes upon his life he begins to do supernatural things i tell you there is an exchange he has either gone to the throne of grace to exchange his life and say lord take it take my life and use me for your glory or he has gone to a herbalist and say take my firstborn or every two two years kill 10 members from my church as a sacrifice and let the anointing keep rising The life that I now live, Paul told us the secret of his anointing. He said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of God. I surrender all. 
to you everything I give I'm teaching you spiritual laws withholding nothing withholding nothing listen you can copy a man if you have not laid down what that man laid down you will never carry what he carries are you hearing what i'm saying you can copy the way he talks you can wear suits like him if you cannot lay down and exchange what that man exchanged in the secret place you will never that's why you can listen to a message that may not be so powerful by a man of god but tremendous grace follows it because there is a fraternity with god that's why you can see a herbalist he can make people millionaires but he lives in a coven it was the exchange for the power he can make people billionaires but he will never stay in a big house he will never wear good clothes he will wear rags papa Deboe, i shared it last week he's made it a vow and a culture that everywhere he goes he will get down on his knees that was his exchange for the kind of glory what are you exchanging let me tell you when you enter into the realm of the spirit you will see men who have exchanged things men who have given their souls to herbalists they want the same job you want they want the same business you want they are killing human beings and sacrificing it and you are just standing lukewarm there is no sacrifice there's no exchange and you believe in the labor market and compete with them there must be an exchange it is this exchange that will end sickness in your body is this exchange that can make angels come and cover your plane so that it will not crash it's not just about you you have exchanged something in the spirit he said i shall not die this is the exchange for living long i will live to declare there are some people that are unkillable it's not about confession i will leave you don't know what they have done in the secret place that's why god can kill a whole nation for the sake of that man jacob have i loved esau have i hated when laban laban did not know the exchange he didn't know what happened between the mother of jacob and esau laban wanted to cheat jacob that anointing came and animals started reproducing after the the the, the colors of jacob's animal and laban said ah i testify that god has blessed me listen when a man has made an exchange in the realm of the spirit you touch him to your own detriment because there is an altar that speaks for him my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god listen this is why you can see certain people shout and say i can never be poor they say i can never die i've told you i remember when i packed everything that i had home and abroad i put it in one bag and i went to a prosperity convention my entire life belonging home and abroad aside from the current clothes that i was wearing it took a sacrifice to put your family in the covenant of poverty it will take an exchange to bring them out don't let any man fool you i dragged those things to the altar i sat down outside like the overflow like this i know we've taken time but what i'm sharing is somebody's deliverance tonight any powerful man you see from today let me tell you something there was an exchange is an irrefutable spiritual law either to god or to the devil crowd does not just come are you hearing me koinonia people are not just coming because they want to come there is a force there is the strength of sacrifice unto god a covenant of teaching truth it's a fraternity with god oh god bring the people and i will teach them truth bring the people and i will teach them no matter what it will cost me and god said the deal is done and a young pastor just gets up and believes that is by church growth principle 
you gun posters everywhere knock from door to door and the realm of the spirit is saying do you not know there is a law my altar rise up on your feet is calling you oh god my altar is calling you my altar is calling you hallelujah i'm going to make an altar call your first exchange starts when you come to jesus christ if you have not given your heart to the lord there is no exchange there is nothing that gives you the audacity to walk free from evil the devil will buffet you or if you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing is risky tonight run to this refuge called jesus christ if you are here inside and outside as we prepare to begin to pray you say man of god i want to make up my life with jesus christ i want to stand on a sure foundation please leave your seat and come out right now whether you are making that decision for the first time or not inside and outside take the courage to come out right now take the courage to come out right now god bless you take the courage to come out right now don't be ashamed don't be afraid of anybody if you are making that decision god bless you koinonia celebrate them inside and outside it's time to deal with the things that are destroying your destiny it starts with jesus keep coming we're out of time get tired of your life and say lord this is the first exchange tonight this is the first exchange make it for real make it for real exchanging your sin nature for his righteousness exchanging your weakness for his strength exchanging yokes and covenants for his liberty and freedom god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming god bless you hallelujah those of you standing i salute you this is the first exchange you're making there's nothing to be ashamed of you will be separated from many things right now hallelujah lift your right hand and say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you tonight i have come before your throne of mercy to exchange my sin for your righteousness to exchange my weakness for your strength goodness the power of god is so strong as i stand here i feel the anointing in a very helping place the law of exchange this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit i exchange my weakness for your strength right now in the name of jesus i declare that i'm born again my god spirit of the living god seal this exchange and from today i belong to jesus from today let the blood of jesus speak for me forward ever and backward never